There are 414 games on Xbox Game Pass as of right now. So, the first step in this definitive Xbox Game Pass list is to lay them all out for you right now. <laughs> <laughs> so don't worry if you didn't quite catch all of the games I just listed or you've already forgotten a couple of them. To tell you the truth, reciting every Xbox Game Pass game won't help you choose which game to play next. The Game Pass library is always changing, with new games coming and going which can make the whole thing difficult to keep on top of and, to be honest, makes definitive list videos like this go out of date pretty quickly. But this isn't your regular Xbox Game Pass list. Oh no! This is different. Let me explain why. Before we get started though, for those of you new to the channel, this is Video Game Subscription Wars. Welcome. Here we compare video game subscriptions, looking at stuff like their game libraries, hence this video, and prices, uh, to see which one is the best value. Because you don't actually need an Xbox console to play Xbox games anymore, and you don't need a PlayStation 4 to play PlayStation games. There's more choice available to you than you think, whether you have a computer or a mobile phone. So please take a look around the channel after this video. Um, it's small, but we have big plans, and I'd love for you to join me. Anyway, back to the video. So, the Xbox Game Pass list is huge, which is great, but it comes with a potential downside that you may have noticed. A writer named Alvin Toffler dubbed the phrase overchoice around 40 years ago. He stated lots of clever things, such as, the people of the future may suffer not from an absence of choice, but from a paralyzing surfeit of it. That's a pretty good sentence right there. But basically what it means is, the problem is not having not enough choice, but having too much choice. Now I know you're probably thinking, why am I getting psychology facts in a video game video? But bear with me for just, just one moment, and this will all make sense. Just, just hold on for just a second. Okay. <clears throat> Two more academics, Sundaraja Iyengar and Mark Lepper, later tested the effects of overchoice. They put random individuals into one of two groups. Half were given a choice of 30 chocolate bars, and half were given a choice of six probably pretty obvious which one you'd rather be in, right? But while subjects initially reported liking having more choice, they ended up more dissatisfied and regretful of their decision than those who only had the choice of six. If you want another example, think about when you watch Netflix, where you spend more time browsing than actually watching something because you don't want to commit to that show because there might be a better one you just haven't found yet. And by the time you choose, your pizza's gone cold and you wonder if it's worth even having anymore because I wanted it piping hot when I watched the finale of Gilmore Girls. Anyway, psychology lesson over. The point I'm trying to make is this. When faced with overwhelming choice, you might get stuck wondering which game to play. So a good place to start is breaking all this down into something more manageable. And genre is probably your best bet, right? Everyone has a couple of genres that they associate to and find more enjoyable. And Xbox Game Pass is broken down into 10 genres. We've got puzzle, simulation, platformers, sports and racing, action and adventure, which is a terrible genre in my opinion, because what game doesn't have some form of action and or adventure, indies, strategy, RPG, shooters, and classics, which seems like whatever Xbox wants to plug at the given time. So if you know you like RPGs, for example, you're going to increase your chances of finding something you like if you start there. This might seem like very obvious advice. If you like RPGs, you might explore the RPG section without even thinking about it, but you might still hesitate to play something you don't know anything about. You might know you like The Witcher, but that doesn't mean you're going to like something like Shenmue 2. While both are RPGs, they provide very different experiences. See, you put soy sauce and wasabi on raw fish and eat it. Hmm, is it yummy? Yeah, it's really good. Sounds good. I want to try some. But what's soy sauce? So if you've narrowed down your own Xbox Game Pass list but still don't know where to start, I can suggest two things. On screen are the three best games in each Xbox Game Pass genre, ranked by Metacritic score. Again, this might seem like a pretty obvious way of finding good games, but it's better than going in blind or relying on the Xbox Game Pass store page. Here I've combined both the average user score and the average critic score to come up with a slightly more accurate total score. It's not perfect, and this is only the games included in the genre pages of the Xbox Game Pass app. 
which is only about 225 out of 414. And I know this because I had to manually input all the Metacritic scores of these 225 games. So I'm glad it wasn't 414, and I'm stalling so this graphic on your screen can stay up for longer because this still took about 3 hours of solid work, so I want you to appreciate it a bit. <laughs> but if just one of you plays one of these games that you wouldn't have otherwise, it will have all been worth it. Of course, you might have played all those games before. You might hate all of those games. So the next best thing I can do is offer you my recommendation, which may be worse than Metacritic because we're taking a sample size of hundreds, boiling it down just to one. But do remember that some user reviews on Metacritic aren't the most convincing. Little ugliness from within and from without. You really should worry about the future of humanity. Where could the mistake happen? We're going back to the Middle Ages. This is how games are no longer done, sorry. So, if someone held a gun to my head and said, Tell me the best genre-based games on Game Pass on gonna shoot with the head, then I would respond with this. The Gardens Between is a short and bittersweet puzzler where you manipulate time to help two friends navigate through levels. The visuals are gorgeous, while the puzzles have enough depth to keep you engaged. The game is only a couple of hours long, and its story is intentionally vague until the very end. If you want something to spend a relaxed evening with, I'd go here. City Skyline is the ultimate city building simulator. If you're unfamiliar with simulator games, it can take a while to figure out, having to rely on the pages of a manual for help rather than tutorials. Once you understand the basics though, City Skyline offers near unlimited potential to create the city of your dreams, as long as you overcome the gruelling reality of functioning roads, electricity and running water. So maybe take a look at some YouTube tutorials first. Ori and the Will of the Wisps releases on Game Pass in a couple of weeks on March 11. This gives you just enough time to play the original, Ori and the Blind Forest. This is a mystical tale about reviving a dead forest to its former beauty, a game with ethereal visuals and sound and excellent progressive platforming and tight controls. I wouldn't waste your time here, to be honest. Tell me! You, you're gonna tell me! You're gonna tell me! Tell me right now! Okay, uh, there's only one option here. Um, unless you really want to play F1 2018, but do you know how much Formula One has changed since 2018? There are so many new wheels and wing mirrors. So yeah, Forza Horizon 4 looks great, and it has lots of cars. So if you like cars, you'll like this. So would you recommend it? Yeah, I guess so. Like I said, this could really be any game on Game Pass, but Sea of Thieves fits the description better than most, and it's actually huge fun. It's a multiplayer pirate simulator with a thriving community and plenty of free game updates, I mean, what's not to love? This is another broad genre which makes picking one game very difficult. i check out Oxenfree if you're a fan of sharp dialogue and spooky sci-fi horror. My time at Porsche if you want a casual living simulator to pour some hours into before your life and mine get consumed whole by the new Animal Crossing. Hotline Miami if you want a fast-paced, brutal top-down shooter, and Hollow Knight if you love Metroidvanias and somehow haven't played this one. If you like card games, then you should play Slay the Spire. If you like card games, you're probably playing Slay the Spire right now, rather than watching this video. For everyone else, give running an entire spaceship a go in FTL Faster Than Light. Final Fantasy XV offers a huge, living, breathing world in which you can- You okay? You know, considering you're underneath a giant bird. It can only be the Master Chief Collection. If you're on console, you can play through every Halo campaign from Reach to Halo 3 because this one didn't happen. It might seem like the obvious choice if you owned an original Xbox, but if you're of the younger generation and haven't played the campaigns, you now have no excuse. Halo Combat Evolved lay the blueprint for any FPS you've ever played on a console, and Halo 2 and Halo 3 arguably did it better each time. If you're on PC, you can play Halo Reach with a mouse and keyboard, and you have all the other games coming soon. I mean, come on, what other shooter on here even comes close? This isn't a real genre, so it's a good opportunity to talk about a game I played recently and really enjoyed. And that's Disneyland Adventures. Captain Hook is not a teddy bear. Oh, it's an absolute classic. So we actually covered about 42 games out of 414. 
So in terms of a definitive Xbox Game Pass list, I would class this as a monumental failure. If you think I've missed something good, let me know in the comments and I'll see to it. Honestly, um, just let me know down there. It's not hard to get noticed. There's not a lot going on. So, not down there. Like, scroll down. Not here. This is fine. So whatever you want me to play, I'll play it. If you want me to dig out the Kinect and give Disneyland Adventures another go, I'll do it. Just remember, you can't play every game on Game Pass. But between us, we can find out which games are worth playing and create our own definitive Xbox Game Pass list. So you start to see the hidden meaning in the title there? Up there? The title's got some layers. Okay, it was just clickbait, I'll be honest with you. But I'm out here trying to get views, don't judge me. So if you're subscribed to Xbox Game Pass, or PlayStation Now, or any of the other services, or if you're considering a subscription, or maybe you've just started a free trial and you want to see what games are worth playing, please drop a like on the video, hit the subscribe button down below, and it would really mean a lot to me. Um, we've got plenty of content on the way, and I'd love for you to join me. Cheers. See you.